Hello fans of OSG, my name is Alyssa Walter and I'm a product engineer with OSG USA. On our site, you'll see five videos in which I cover an OSG product common to the mold and dye industry. In these presentations, I'll be introducing you to the product, features and benefits, uh, target applications, cutting data, as well as product offering. Each video is going to go over one of these products. The video you're watching right now is the AEH Ball Nose End Mills. Uh, additionally, you can go to the other videos and watch uh, the presentation on the WXL, WXS End Mills, ADO Drills, the WHO NI or HUNI Drill, as well as the PHC Indexable Mills. So let's get started with the A brand AEH ball nose end mills. These are brand new tools from OSG. We just released them uh, this year and they are currently our go-to ball nose tools for machining anything in high hardened material. But before we get to those talking points, I'd like to show you the AEH end mill product video. All right, so now let's get into the features and benefits of these AEH ball nose end mills. So all of the AEH ball nose end mills have the new DuraRay coating. So let's talk about what the DuraRay coating is. 
the DuraArray coating is a multi-layer coating for the highest wear resistance. This is our hardest milling grade coating for ferrous materials, coming in at 4180 of Vickers hardness. Um, so that because it's the hardest coating we have, it also means it's pretty much the most wear resistant coating, one of the most wear resistant coatings we can offer. Not only is it super wear resistant because of how hard it is, but it's also very heat resistant. So these tools are meant for machining high hardened materials where you're generating a lot of heat. So having a coating on the tool that is very good at resisting all of that heat will definitely help elongate the tool life overall. So this particular coating has multiple layers. The very top layer is a super heat resistant layer. It's kind of like the, uh, the, the, the coat on top of all the other coats to, to give it extra protection against heat. And then underneath that coat, there are ultra fine periodic nano layer coats. So even thinner multi-layer coats squashed in underneath that top layer. And why so many layers is because it's harder for cracks to propagate through multiple levels, through multiple layers of coating than it is any single or double layer coating that we can offer. So we make them super, super thin, but we layer them up very, very heavily to minimize the crack propagation um, and basically protects the substrate of the tool much more, much better. And then lastly, the very bottom layer of this coating is an adhesion reinforcing layer, which basically makes it so that the coating and the substrate that the coating is sitting on top of has a, just a really nice uh, adhesion layer to bring them and bond them together to hold the coating onto the substrate as best as possible. So next I'd like to talk about the high precision radius that is ground onto the four and two flute ball nose tools. So what high precision radius means is that from the starting grind point, which is that zero degree start point, all the way to 180 degrees, OSG is able to maintain five microns, seven microns, or 10 micron uh, tolerance to that true profile depending on size that's why the number changes a little bit but we're able to keep a super tight tolerance on the overall profile of the radius itself which is a pretty difficult feat especially uh, when you compare it to more conventional ball nose tools where our our, our comp competition really struggles at the zero and the 180 degree locations because it tends to dig into the tool because that's the start and stop point of the grinding wheel now the better you can maintain, uh, I'm sorry, the better a manufacturer can keep the tolerance on the tooling, the better the tolerance and the overall finish you can expect to keep on your parts. The third benefit of the AEH ball nose end mills is the unequal indexing. So this applies to only one of these several styles of ball nose tools. So unequal indexing means that from, so in the, in the case of the four flute ball nose tool, the AEM, a BMH tool, it's a four flute tool and it has indexing that is not 90 degrees, 90 degrees, 90 degrees, 90 degrees. It's off a little bit from flute one to flute two, flute two to flute three, flute three to flute four, and flute four back to flute one. That indexing angle is different. Uh, the reason for this is unequal indexing or unequal helix or unequal pitch, anything that is what we've termed unequal or variable in cutting tools is meant to help aid in the suppression of chatter. So it's very common now to see unequal indexing and helix geometry on square and, and corner radius tools. So now OSG is able to grind this even onto our ball nose tools to help uh, break up harmonics and reduce vibration to improve surface finish. The last feature and benefit of these tools that I'm gonna talk about is the variable rake angle. So like the unequal indexing that was only on the four flute tool, on the two flute tools, we see the variable rake. 
So what variable rake angle means is on the same flute, so there's two flutes on this ball nose tool that have this variable rake, uh, on one flute from the zero degree point out to the 180 degree point, I'm sorry, the 90 degree point, which is basically the center line of the tool. So from the center line of the tool to the outside edge of the tool, the radial rake angle changes from a neutral rake to a very, very strong negative rake. So again, to emphasize, this is this tool is meant to machine harder materials. It, it can do the softer stuff, so your 45, your 40, 35, 30 Rockwell materials, but where it really shines is especially in the hardened materials up to 60 Rockwell. So having strong negative rake angles helps to protect the cutting edges from chipping out. So the variable rake angle um, helps to keep a good she shearing action at the center of the tool because it's neutral, neutral to slightly positive in the very center. So if you were to calculate surface speed at the center of the tool, it's zero, it's basically zero. There is no, there's hardly any cutting speed at the center line of the tool. So if you have something that's very dull at that point, it's not going to cut very well. So you've got to have neutral to positive geometry in that area to create and start creating a good chip. But the further out you go on the cutting edge, um, closer to the full diameter of the tool, the higher the, uh, the SFM, the surface speed gets on the tool and the velocity increases as you move out from the center of the tool, which means you need to have more protection out there. So that variable rake angle on this tool helps to do a couple things. It creates sharpness where it needs to be, where there's hardly any, any cutting and, 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 uh, and shearing, and then it helps to protect the areas that are spinning quite fast and need more protection. Okay, so I guess there is one more feature and benefit to these tools. All of these tools have an H4 shank precision, and we'll talk about what that means. So an H4 shank tolerance allows for tighter clamping and limits the total runout to provide high accuracy finishing. So with, uh, an, with a shank diameter, or in ISO terms, it's a shaft basically, uh, there are certain types of tolerances that you can maintain on that shaft, on that shank. So typically we grind, uh, it's common to see cutting tools ground to a shank uh, tolerance of H6. Whereas on these particular tools, because accuracy is kind of the name of the game with the grinding technology that we, we maintain on these tools, we are able to keep the runout tolerance and the shank tolerance to within an H4. So what does that mean? That means, uh, for example, on a quarter inch shank diameter, an H4 shank tolerance will have a tolerance of plus nothing, plus zero, minus two tenths, basically. Whereas a conventional end mill with a larger shank tolerance, most of them will conform to plus zero, minus four tenths, so double that of what the AEH end mills have on the shanks. All right, so let's switch gears a little bit and talk about the target applications for the AEH ball nose end mills. So, well, there's definitely a reason we're presenting them at a Marimold because we definitely want to recommend these for any application that is related to uh, tooling necessary for high hardened steels, or you can use the AEBMH, the multi flute tool or the two flute tool, from a rougher all the way up to a finishing tool, or in applications where you require excellent surface finish and high precision. So, just to reiterate that again, high hardness finishing is definitely one of the prominent areas that these tools are going to shine. You can use these tools in four, I mean, you can use them in three axis machining too, if you wanted to, but four and five axis machining definitely because the full 180 radius allows 
to machine up to 90 degree walls. Now what's nice about the AE LNBDH, uh, these tools have more of a severe back taper to them, kind of more of a teardrop shape to them, meaning that there is less rubbing, I guess if you want to call it that, less contact surface area and more cutting uh, surface area done at the peripheral of the tool if you are machining up to a 90 degree wall. So there's less chance of, of, uh, of rubbing the tool unnecessarily uh, if you are machining up to a 90 degree wall. So let me talk to you about just the one product constraint on these tools. Because of how strong the geometry is on this tool, this series of tools, we don't really recommend it for your gummy materials. So here I'm talking about your non-ferrous materials, you know, your 6061s aluminums or, or any non-ferrous materials like that where it's real gummy, um, you know, things that are prone to built up edge or that are kind of sticky in nature, your 300 series stainlesses. Uh, will it cut it? Yes, it will. Will it cut it cleanly and smear free? And eh, probably not. Like I said, this is a very strong edge tool um, with very negative rake geometry. So it's not ideal for more gummy material. So now we're going to go into a little bit of machining data, just a couple different data sets that we got in various materials and explaining to you what we saw from those, from those experiences. So this piece of data is a 10 millimeter tool of the AEBMH as the multi-flute tool against two competitors in D2 tool steel, 60 Rockwell. Here we were doing pocketing at 180 surface foot, about 31 inches a minute. So chip load wise, that's about five tenths, uh, five thousandths per tooth. Uh, with depths of cut, your radial uh, depth of cut around 88 thou and your axial depth of cut around 30 thou. This is with air coolant. Uh, on a BT40 vertical machine. So what we see here is that the AEBMH tool was able to achieve almost 1,000 um, feet of milling length if you were to calculate, you know, use a cam system to add up exactly how much length it milled. It was able to achieve about 1,000 feet of, of milling length with about 3 thousandths of wear on the OD. So we measured how long it lasted versus how much wear it, it had on it when it finally bit the dust. So you want to, in this type of application, this type of test, want to last the longest and have the least amount of wear. And that's exactly where we saw the uh, AEBMH land with this test. Consistent wear in high-speed steel. So this is another 10 millimeter tool in M2 high-speed steel at 65 Rockwell, uh, doing, again, some more pocketing, 410 surface foot, almost 80 inches a minute, about 5 thou per tooth, where we're doing uh, 12 thousandths axial depth of cut with almost 50 thousandths on the radial depth of cut with air again in an HSK 63 machine, horizontal machine. So again, we're looking at how many feet of milling length the tools were able to achieve versus how much wear we found on the OD. So we see in this case, this the, the AE BM age tool is able to achieve more than double the amount of tool life over this competitor. Low vibration in sharp corners. So one of the most common things to see is force spikes and chatter and kind of that squealy sound and sometimes in the most catastrophic of places, breakage, when an end mill cuts a severe corner or it gets trapped in a corner. Um, so this particular machining data set was testing how much vibration there was in what we call a sharp corner, meaning it wasn't interpolating a radius, it was cutting a 90 degree corner with no radius in between. So it was trapping the tool as much as it possibly could to see the 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 maximum amount of of uh, kickback and deflection we were going to see in that corner. So as you see from this force output chart, the conventional tool versus 
the AEBMH tool, which, as I remind you, is a variable indexing tool which helps to suppress that type of chatter. Extended tool life in steel. So here's another 10 millimeter tool in D2 tool steel, 60 Rockwell, doing some more pocketing. So we are going at almost 500 surface foot, uh, 34 inches a minute. Very light on the axial depth of cut here, 8 thousands with only a 20 thou radial step over. Um, looking at how much flank wear we see on the cu tool cutting edges again versus how much uh, milling length we, that tool each tool was able to achieve. So in this case, the AE BDH, which, which is the two flute tool, was able to achieve about 2,000 feet of machining, almost double what the nearest competitor was able to do with the least amount of wear. In this test, we tested a 10 millimeter tool in Stavax, uh, which is a hardened 420 stainless, basically it's rated at 53 Rockwell in this case, doing some pocketing, uh, 980 surface foot. So we are doing definitely a lot of high speed machining here. So RPM wise, the spindle is rotating at about 9,500 uh, RPMs and doing 105 inches a minute uh, as far as table feed. Depths of cut, we're looking at 8,000 axial depth of cut with about 20,000 radial step over. And looking at the AEBDH in comparison to competitor A and B, I mean, kind of just blew it out of the water here, getting well over 5,000 feet of, of, of tool life versus the roughly 1,200 feet of milling length. Uh, tool life that the two competitors were able to get with even less wear than those competitors had at their time of um, being pulled out of the machine. So we're coming to the last segment of this section and we're going to finish it off uh, with the product offering for these, these tools. The AEBDH offering, which is the two flute ball nose tools, we have 130 seconds up to a half inch and 0.2 millimeters up to 12 millimeter equivalents, total of 24 EDPs. So these are 2D neck lengths where applicable for the most part. Uh, if you need to know what the effective length is based on draft angles, that is provided in our literature and our uh, flyer so you can find it there as well as standard and high speed milling parameters in the catalog uh, flyers. For the AEBMH, which is the multi-flute ball nose tool, the four flute tools, we have an offering of eighth inch up to a half inch, two mil up to 12 mil, 14 EDPs total. And again, those are 2D neck length where applicable. Lastly, we have the AELNBDH, which is the two flute long neck offering. So we have sizes in 0.01 millimeter up to six mil. We've got a ton of these guys, 189 EDPs total with neck lengths varying by size up to 20 times the diameter. Well, thank you so much for being here with us today. And if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to any OSG personnel. Thank you so much.